Christ is risen. The worship service this morning is divine service, setting three on page 184. We stand for opening hymn 463. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal <clears throat> and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With a voice of singing, declare that declare this with a shout of joy to the end of the earth. 
Alleluia. The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. Alleluia. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. of singing. Declare this with a shout of joy to the end of the earth. Alleluia. The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration grants that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Testament reading for the sixth Sunday of Easter is from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. We loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. 
So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from James chapter 1. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. And that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the Gospel of our Lord. The Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth,
be seated. We're welcoming you this morning to Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church. Please remember to fill out the fellowship pads on every pews. That's how we get to know who's worshiping with us. Um, just one, a couple announcements. Number one, in between services is the public examination of faith for our two catechumens who will be confirmed next Sunday. Uh, normally, I'm probably just as nervous as they are the night before, but these two uh, young, young boys are incredible, and uh, it'll be a true blessing to you to uh, hear them uh, confess the faith, so please come and support them. Uh, next week is confirmation at 1030 service only. Um, and the only other announcement is just a correction from the insert, as you probably already noticed, that the choir is uh, the offertory, not between the readings. Uh, we continue now with the hymn of the day, 766.
Christ is risen. In the name of the Father, and of the risen Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We hear these words of Jesus again from the Gospel reading, John chapter 16, verse 24. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. So far, the word of the Lord. If any Bible verse causes you to doubt the veracity of God's word, or causes you to stumble in faith, you're either misunderstanding the verse, or you aren't reading it in the humility of allowing your reason to submit to Scripture. Jesus says, ask, and you will receive. To the person who doubts these words by pointing to past instances of prayer requests that went unanswered, you're misunderstanding what Jesus is teaching. To the person who struggles to believe God will actually keep his promise in the verse, you might be thinking of God as a personal genie instead of the Almighty who made heaven and earth who cares for you. We must be careful not to add words to Scripture that Jesus himself does not say. He says, ask, and you will receive. He does not say, for example, ask for a pony, and you will receive a pony. Or ask for $10 million, and you will receive $10 million. We are indeed to ask for the things that are on our hearts, but we need to trust that we will receive what God knows is best for us. In the same sentence that Jesus says, ask and you will receive, he concludes that your joy may be full. Receiving a pony or $10 million will not make your joy full. It might bring some temporal happiness, but full joy is deep-rooted contentment in all things. In more instances than not, when prayers are not answered in the way we asked, God is teaching us to trust him. We need to learn that his will is best. Now let's unpack Jesus' words, ask and you will receive. The command is that we ask, and the promise is that we will receive. Ask and receive is, to use Lutheran terms, both law and gospel. If we don't ask, we are being disobedient to the law. I have sometimes heard men and families say things like, well, my wife is the prayer person of the family. This cannot be so, dear brothers. You, of all people, are given the responsibility, the duty by God to pray as the head of your household. It is you, husbands, that need to be leading your family in prayer, modeling for all in your house how to do it and simply how to be in the habit of doing it. Now, it is true, all Christians are commanded to pray, men, women, and children. No one is exempt. I'm simply pointing out the head of the household is the one who is to model the prayer life for everyone else. Now, the dangers of not praying are numerous. For now, let's just talk about three of them. One, not praying teaches us to think that we can live without prayer. The Christian cannot live without it. Prayer is the means by which we speak to our Heavenly Father. The child that does not speak to his dad is estranged. How much more so the Christian who does not speak to his God and Lord. Two, when we don't pray for the things we need and desire, we will learn over time, we will be catechized over time to think that the things we acquired were by our own means, instead of acknowledging that our daily bread comes from our God's gracious hand. The third danger of not praying is that we might not receive the things that we long to have. Consider what James says in his epistle, later on, farther in the epistle than what we heard today. 
James says, you do not have because you do not ask. Now this happens far more often than we realize. For just one example, someone gets diagnosed with a terminal disease. The doctor says they have only six months to live. And everyone involved just believes the doctor's word is bond. The terminal patient and his loved ones don't even ask God to heal him since they think his fate is set. And thus, James' words apply, you do not have because you do not ask. You do not have healing or even a miracle because you don't ask for one. Now, could there be other reasons why you are not healed? Of course. But the point is that life's end is left to God's providence. The time of death is left to God's discretion. Anyone who has prayed long enough has had times where God did not request that, that God did not answer that prayer for healing or a miracle. I'm simply pointing out that there are instances when we don't even ask God for the things that are on our hearts, which makes it an obvious reason why we don't receive them. Now the next verse in that James passage in chapter 4 also teaches us that we can ask for wrong things. James writes, you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. This is why we don't get the pony or the ten million dollars. God is not a genie who grants wishes, but a graciously heavenly Father who bestows blessings. The word passions there in Greek is hedonis, where we get the word hedonism from. Hedonism is the pursuit of earthly pleasures and self-indulgence. Hedonists are those who, for example, make most of their life decisions in the pursuit of material excess and personal pleasure instead of making decisions based on God's word, which serve, for the most part, our neighbor. We should not be surprised that asking God for things that will hurt or hinder our path to salvation will not be received. Now consider now the gospel half of the ask and you will receive. All Christians are required to trust God's promises. The question is what will we receive when we pray? Notice that Jesus does not say we will receive exactly what we ask for, but we will receive, we will receive something good from God. We know this because of what Jesus teaches in Luke 11, when he says, what father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish, give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? The good gifts God gives just might not be exactly what we asked for, as Jesus concludes saying, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? God giving the Holy Spirit is God giving us the faith to trust that he will provide what we need and that he will provide what is best for us. Since it does, however, appear that some or even many of our prayers go unanswered, consider two of the most famous unanswered prayers in the Bible. First, Jesus himself prays to the Father in the Garden of Gethsemane, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Now, Jesus knew that he needed to go to the cross. But just ponder for a moment if the Father had granted that prayer as Jesus prayed it. None of us could go to heaven. Thanks be to God for unanswered prayers. But recall what the Father does grant him in the very next verse. Luke writes, And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. Ask, and you will receive. Jesus asked for the cup to be taken away, but received an angel for strength to endure the cross and grave. Next, consider the Apostle Paul, 
who prayed three times that the thorn in his flesh be removed. God did not grant him what he asked for either. But what did God give instead? Paul writes, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. His thorn, Paul's thorn, wasn't removed from his flesh, but he was given God's grace, which was sufficient for the day. God's grace to believe that in Paul's weakness, he was strong in Christ Jesus. Think about what Jesus received. Think about what Paul <clears throat> received. Think about what you receive, specifically when it appears our prayers go unanswered. His grace is sufficient for us. His holy angels are, according to Hebrews 1.14, ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. His power is made perfect in our weakness. He is strengthening our trust in him. He wants us to trust that his will is better than our will. This is how hearts are made to be full of joy. We learn to ask for the things we need. We learn to ask for the things that serve our neighbor we receive what we need to support our body and life. We receive the grace of God, which learns to trust him. And beyond that, as the psalmist teaches, our cup overflows. If by life's end, we can learn to be satisfied with God's provisions, trusting him to see us through to eternal life, our joy will be full. That's a good life. May God grant it. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Now the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. <clears throat> Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that, by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our God, in holy baptism you have called us to be Christians and granted us the remission of sins. Make us ready to receive the most holy body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of all of our sins. And grant us grateful hearts that we may give thanks to you. O Father, to your Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we offer before you our common supplications for the well-being of your church throughout the world. So guide and govern it by your Holy Spirit that all who profess themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Send down upon all ministers of the gospel and upon the congregations committed to their care the healthful spirit of your grace, that they may please you in all things. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us. Supply them with your blessing, that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. We humbly ask your abiding presence in every situation that you would make known your ways among us. Preserve those who travel, satisfy the wants of your creatures, and help those who call upon you in any need, that they may have patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will, be released from their afflictions, especially Dean. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament on page 194. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who is sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death, and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, Ammonite, when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O oh God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who with loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless me, the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.